Good morning, Mike. Thank morning. you for your time today. Pleasure. Um, and um, I'd like to really start off with um, your uh, fantastic Studio Indigo design and architecture business. Um, was established probably in about 2005, is that correct? I think we've been, next year's our 15th anniversary, so you do the math. So, but before Studio Indigo it had other incarnations as well, it was known as uh, Indigo Boyd, and before that just right. Indigo. So I think starting about 1998, it started off as Indigo. Right. And then it's morphed into what it is today. So. Yeah. So I think, I remember our first engagement with you, which was um, the amazing house up in Upper Fillimore Gardens. I think that was 205 as well, actually. So it was the beginning of... That the was, Wealth Partnerships interaction with you. That was just before or on 9-11. It was. Which we didn't know whether it was a good thing or a bad thing at the time. Yeah. Um, but we hoped that it had uh, suppressed all the bids for that house, but I'm not sure that it I did. I mean, to be honest, Mike, that was quite a project. And, when, and, and we were unsure of yourselves and the, and the business at the time, but we knew that you had the capacity to put it all together. Amanda and I obviously worked with you on that, but... Um, that was a major, major project. I mean, do you, would you say that really put you on the road as far as Junior Indigo is concerned? Uh, actually, I think it was the project before that. It was a, um, a house in Addison Road yeah. in Holland Park. Yeah. Um, and certainly all the agents uh, said that it was the best, best house in London, yeah. but in the wrong area. In yeah. those days, yeah. uh, that part of Holland Park wasn't so fashionable. Yeah. Uh, I think with what we did with that, the houses in that street, we actually worked on about four or five. We... On the Addison? On the Addison, yeah. yeah. We, I think we, 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 we showed people what those houses could be. Uh, and suddenly we, we changed the value of that street considerably and yeah. through good design. Um, uh, and I think the, the last one we did in Addison was bought for about 12 million. Mm. We spent about two or three million on it, and by the time it was sold, it was 55 million. So I, I would like to think that uh, the design had a great deal to do with it. Yeah. And then the one in Upper Fillmore, uh, a beast of a house. Yes. Um, yeah. With a, a, a horrid extension. Quite an extraordinary swimming pool, pink, pink marble everywhere. It, it was, and a gold lift, that I, I remember. Yeah. It yeah. was one of those uh, houses with the first basement so it yeah. made like a sieve yeah. uh, but it was extraordinary it was about a 200 foot garden uh, with a, a basement um, under that yeah. um, and it was it was quite a challenge if you yeah. remember I think we made it smaller yeah. than, than what, well, what the, original was, size, yeah. the original size uh, and it had a, an immense amount of parking at the back which was unusual mm -hmm. but the interesting thing about Upper Fillmore Gardens now, it's this is sort of our, our relationships together at the beginning with my, myself and the World Partnership and Amanda as well but looking at um, the, when you look back on Upper Fillmore Gardens now, it was your uh, injection on that particular house and the construction of that changed, I think changed the face of that particular street. So, it, you know, if, if anybody said what's probably one of the most wealthy streets or in you know, central London, and certainly Upper Fillmore Gardens. Well, I think the it's beginning when you started that house, really. I think it's, we did the same as we did on Addison, where yeah. we took Upper Fillmore Gardens and we changed people's perception of that street. Yeah. Um, uh, again, I think through through good design, you yeah. know, we, we showed what those houses could be. Mm. Uh, we changed people's perceptions and, and view of it. Uh, and now it's a very, very, you know, extremely valuable. It's very value. individual as well. So you, you've got an individual house. You did a, a very individual studio indigo design. And that was, you know, it was mind blowing at that time as well. But I suppose when you look back at that, did you ever really think, okay, so this is the first thing you talked about Addison, and then you've got Upper Fillmore. They're not small projects, but do you think there was a really big journey ahead from there? I think I remember one night, uh, just as we started that project, I was, uh, I was in the Royal Opera House, and I was sitting in a box and watching the opera, and suddenly I had a panic attack, thinking, oh my God, what have we taken on? Because yeah. you know, in those days... There weren't that many basements around, no. and, and uh, it, it, the challenges were considerable. Today, you take it in your stride, you think nothing of it. But in those early days, basements were still a rarity. Yeah. Um, there were lots of problems associated with them, uh, technically. Um, but, and, and then subsequently, you know, it's taken off and no yeah. one wants a basement now. And, and um, to think of the individual that perhaps owns the house at the very, very end of it was quite unusual as well. So. 
you know, the clients in that part of the world have to be quite special to be in that particular street. Yes, I think. <laughs> yes, we can't go into names, but uh, no. it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a who's who or a Sunday Times rich list street, isn't it? So it is, it is. So when, you, when we go sort of start, that's 205, so obviously where we are now is a, is a, is a long way on from there, but you know, back in those days, Mike, what, did, what was your main vision for, your, for the business, the studio and the game? Um, the main vision was uh, to have a nice... Uh, quiet life, uh, an office of five people max, mm. um, doing a few nice houses here and there, and uh, yeah. um, and what's changed is that we're now fifty, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. we were then presented with so many interesting challenges in terms of both design or interesting uh, clients yeah. that we couldn't really say no to, and uh, and so it's just it has developed over time. Did you, you realise that you were going to get to that sort of size, or that was just no, no I that said, wasn't your vision. But uh, <laughs> it wasn't my vision, and I, I sometimes you know have to pinch myself and think, oh my god, you know, especially when you go to work on a on a, on a Monday morning and you know you've got an office of fifty people, yeah. fifty mouths to feed, uh, and you do ask yourself, how did it get there? Mm, this is true, I suppose. Well, as would you de- define? How would you define that success then? That's for you, what would you define as success from that beginning to where you are now? Uh, it's the, I'm not motivated by money, yeah, um, and I'm not motivated by winning, but I am motivated about losing. I never want to lose. So, 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 so the success is is actually uh, for me is is the project that we've worked on. Um, and the people that we've met, the journey that we've been on with, with clients, yeah, yeah. but also an, an, an enormous sense of pride in the people who, who I work with in Studio Indigo. Um, our philosophy is quite different from most practices, I think, in that we give a lot of um, uh, responsibility to people. Yeah. Uh, we're very engaging with, with clients. Uh, yeah. We give a very, very personal uh, uh, service, I think. Uh, and so the people in the office have an enormous pride in what they do. Yeah. They have a sense of responsibility and ownership of a project. Um, and I steer the ship, of course. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, I can't do everything on my own. I could never do everything on my own, even, even when we were five. Uh, there are people in the office who are much better at uh, yeah. things than, than I am in many ways. I set the course and, and they sail the, the project in the direction that I want to go with the client. Um, so I, I so, so the success for me is just the enormous pride in, in the people who work at Studio Indigo. I mean, as you say, you've got lots of projects on the go at the moment. We talked about two of the, two of the, probably the largest ones. You started early on that was on the Studio Indigo side. But when you in in the world that I've seen, and I, you know, and one of the things that I love about the business is the fact that you meet people like yourselves, and, and we and we work with you for a long time. And, you know, we become a part of everybody's group and conversation of, of, of perhaps the next project. But, you know, what would you say is probably at, to this stage one of your greatest achievements? We could, I mean, we could be sitting in it. Just, just <laughs> uh, well, the greatest achievement is the project that's just been finished, to be yeah. honest. I mean, I, um, I have enormous ownership of a project uh, whilst we're doing it. Um, and that's the most important thing that I'm focused on. Um, and uh, uh, at the time, that's what I'm yeah. most proud of. Yeah. But of course, those projects finish and then you go on to the next one. And, yeah. and what's, what motivates me and what, what grows the practice is that it's, it's, uh, you're motivated by the challenges that, that come into the office uh, yeah. in terms of clients, in terms of projects. So each one becomes the most successful. But it's, if I look back on 15 years, it's, it's, it's difficult to single out one project, if I'm, I'm honest. Um, yes, you alluded to this house which we're sitting in now, which is yeah. my own house, um, which had many, many challenges. Uh, I like challenges because challenges provide interesting solutions. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Challenges are good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, again, in some respects, being involved in some respects on this particular house but I can uh, it's a sort of a conversation that I've had with him maybe a couple of times before but when you um, when you're in my position 
and we're looking at your work. And I think we were having lunch not long ago and saying that you know we're very much the observers of what you do. Um, and it's great feedback for us to you know pass that back to you as well. But also it's the it's the knowledge that we have of all the people that we work with, the clients, the people that are buying, the people that we acquire for. But um, I remember this one in particular because I remember at the very very beginning actually in I was in Singapore at the time and I think with Charles I closed the deal on the on the purchase of the property, property standing on a rooftop in the uh, Four Seasons Hotel in Singapore. So I think that set something that was about to happen about this fantastic house. And I remember the discussions that we had about what you could do and what a ma- ma- magnificent signature of your work. And now you've got a house that has a roof that ro- revolves off or slides off into a roof terrace and you're over a, a fantastic garden that um, just oozes um, brightness and space, etc. So, I mean, would you put this down as probably one of your most extravagant uh, um, projects or... I think uh, probably one of the most innovative. Yeah. Um, if you remember, you know, when you told me about this house, um, you just, great house, great house. Um, it, you know, it, it's an unusual house and it's yeah. going to have an unusual solution. And yeah. so it does. Yeah, it you does. Know, it's, it's, yeah. it's six former studios, artist studios. It uh, overlooks an, a, a fantastic Georgian square. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't have a garden. So... There were lots of challenges, you know, the house is, is right on the street and it's created some unique features, you talked about them, the, um, we put a garden on, on, on the top level, uh, yeah. a, a proper winter garden um, with a, a roof that roll, rolls back and great big windows that open up like gull wings. Yeah. Some of these things are kind of quite typical on yachts, I, I, I subsequently found out, um, but not in houses in central London. No. I quite agree with so you. So I think your, your advice was, uh, you know, it's a great house, it'll need an unusual solution. Yeah. And so when we first started on it, we actually didn't know what the solutions were. You know, we, we, we ourselves struggled to, to figure out how best to, um, to, to plan it, to, to the best kind of look to give it to it. Um, and so it's a journey. Uh, yeah. And a journey that, that uh, because it's my house, we could uh, experiment a little bit more uh, than we would perhaps if it was for a client. And I can imagine it was, it was full of challenges. I mean, I think I've, I've said this to you as well, actually, that if James Bond had a house in London, this would be it. And it's um, not only because James Bond is you know, synonymous to this um, fantastic house, but literally the, 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 the challenges that you had to create, what you needed to create, the sort of private access to the rear, the car parking, everything that goes with what is a beautiful house. But... Um, I have said that a couple of times to a couple of clients. So if you want a James Bond's house, it's here. And uh, so it's m- probably one of the most unusual things that I've seen in my time. So. Good. Well, as, as I said, the, the technical challenges creates new interesting solutions, which make it fairly unique, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, have you any regrets in your time in the, in, over the Studio Indigo years since... I suppose my, my only regret, regret is that we didn't get into boats a, a lot sooner because uh, for us that's, that's a new branch to our studio and go tree as it were. Um, and you know we love we love the industry. We, we love yeah. the, the, the challenges. We lo- I, we love the techno- technology that's involved. We love the the, the organisation that's involved. We love the fact that we can take some of the, the ideas that we 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 have and we don't develop in the residential world and we take it into the boating world and likewise we take boating um, ideas and, and contacts and, and uh, in, into the residential world so now there's there's massive crossover between both our land-based work and our, our sea-based work yeah. so yeah. that's become fascinating over the years so I wish I'd started sooner. Well actually fun enough actually I was having a good chat with Mandy about this and um, um, she informed me, and obviously I was involved with the, the project again in Tregunta Road, but she informed me that actually that's probably the time when the client that you know and had well, which was a good friend, um, probably encouraged you, is that right, to move into the, the interior design and the, and the super yacht world? Is that all, where it all started? Or? Um, yeah. Or was that the beginning? That, that, was, that was the beginning. He was an amazing Australian, and uh, he asked us to... Uh, refit his Mangusta, and yeah. that's where it started. Um, we actually went 
Having well, his, developed his house. Of course. Yes, uh, we went on his uh, we went on his uh, his mango stir, and that really got us back into boating because we yeah. had. I had always always grown up sailing with my my father, um, and then my partner and I we kept a boat up in Henley for I guess for about ten years, sort yeah. of a river boat. Yeah. Um, and and then we went to Paul's boat in, in on the Med, and we suddenly realised that we had missed our yeah. boat. So, yeah. um, and so that, the rest was history on that. So that, that was history. It, it got us re-interested in, in boating and we went on and we've had three boats or four boats since then. Yeah, and then also we chatted, you know, you also get into the design of um, you know, jets and private, private jets, etc. And that's all part of the, the flow of the boat, boating side of it, or is it um, just something that just happened? I think it's the flow of, of the, the the land-based stuff. What's yeah. happened over the years is that we do someone's house. Yeah. We get to do their country house or their holiday house. We get to do their office. We get to do their boat and their plane. Yeah. Um, and now sometimes it starts off with a boat, then we do the house. Sometimes it starts off with a, yeah. a hotel, and then we do the house. So um, I think it's about building up personal relationships and understanding yeah. how clients work and, yeah. and making them feel comfortable. Uh, uh, I think also because we, we, we're spread across different uh, sectors in, in a sense, we, are, we do come, in, come at it in a slightly fresher way. You know, we haven't designed you know, hundreds of boats. We've done you know, a handful. Yeah. Um, and so maybe it's our naivety and our innocence, I don't know, but I think that we do approach it in a slightly different way. Yeah. Um, we're not, we don't feel that we have to, um, you know, we have to do something new all the time, you know, things can be innovative, but you don't have to make things new for the sake of, of it being new. And I do find a lot of boats are just trying a li little bit too hard in terms yeah. of design. Well, I mean, your time is, I mean, massively taken up by the work that you've now got, obviously, in the real estate side of it and the residential properties that you're dealing with. So it brings me on to what's probably a, you know, a great, a nice thing to, to, to chat to you about is um, this year, the Super Yacht Awards, you have won in, uh, the best interior design, or you're part of the team that put the best interior design. Is that, how, did, how did you feel about that? Well, it's our sort of second major Super Yacht, um, yeah. our second award. So, yeah. um, Sounds I, like you should be doing it more often. <laughs> right? I it. hope so, I hope so. <laughs> um, you know, again, just enormously thrilled for yeah. the team in our office uh, and for the yard um, uh, who, um, you know, who created the boat. It, yeah. you know, it, it was a spec boat. Uh, much of the interior architecture had been created by Nauta. Um, and they'd done an amazingly fantastic job. And, yeah. and Studio Indigo came and put the icing on the cake. Put the right? icing on the cake. Um, but that's a, I mean, it's a great deal of skills all put together. So I just imagine that's quite difficult when you're normally you know, used to running your own business from the beginning. I just think it's another challenge. Um, uh, you know, so I, I never see these things as, as yeah. problems. I just, I love uh, problem solving and that's just another problem. You know, we've come in halfway through a project what do you do, yeah. you know, um, how, how do you make them the best out of it? Uh, and I think we're, we're good at that simply because that's the way we approach clients, whether land or, or, or sea base. Um, it's about listening to clients uh, and understanding what it is that they want. Yeah. Not what we want, but what it is that they want. And yeah. then we will use our design skills um, to try to achieve that. And that, as a result, makes our work very diverse, mm. but also, most importantly, makes it interesting for us because yeah. every project is, is new, it's different, it's a challenge. We're not regurgitating the same look, the same feel, the same product time after time. Yeah. So, Mike, you've reached 50 plus people oh, now thank you very in much. your business. So, um, at the, are you referring to my age or the number of people in my, in my office? Of course, no, the people in your office. Oh, right. Well, they're both, near, but, they're uh, both 50 plus. Um, one, the one thing I love about your team is that I, my, myself and Amanda both love a lot of the team as well. We know very well and, and um, we've kind of grown with them at the same time. And, uh, but you've got a very diverse team and it's a young team as well. So something that's you know, really interesting in this, in this sort of world was normally you are dealing with architects that have been in the business for decades, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got 
Do you get a flavour of your team into your design today, or the younger people that you deal with, and the diversity of them all? Well, as you say, we're 50, 50 people plus. Uh, I think we're 37 different nationalities, 17 different languages. Yeah. It's what great it ref- communication. It reflects London. It's the most exciting thing to walk yeah. in for me. You know, in our, in our Brexit world, you know, parts of England don't like it. But yeah. for me, the most exciting thing about London and what makes it a world city is that that wonderful diversity uh, of language and culture. Yeah. And the Brits are so great at sort of absorbing and pinching everyone's yeah. ideas. Yeah. So in my office, you, you walk in, and I guess most people would speak three languages, yeah. except for the English. Of course, the English might speak a second language, yeah. but if pushed. Um, if pushed. Yeah. Um, but everyone else, you know, they're, they're talking away in... in, in so in Russian you, and German and French. Does that all come out of your work now? Is that, is that you know, you've, have you had a like, slightly change in, in what you do, or I think does that help that? I Positive, think it's the it? I think it's the work. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, the work the, ethic. It's the work ethic more than anything yeah. else. You know, uh, Kiwis and Australians and South Africans have a can-do spirit. I yeah. think it comes from you know, you know, they send a, a, a tractor to. To, to New Zealand and you know it breaks down they can't send back for a spare part back to the UK yeah. you know certainly 50 years ago 60 years ago or more yeah. they, they'd have to fix it so uh, people are um, uh, uh, they're interested in solving problems yeah uh, and I think because we're very uh, multicultural we we do in our own different ways yeah. bring something different a different way of doing things yeah and it makes you understand that you know, as a designer or an architect with your architect's hat on or your interior design hat on or your boating hat on, yeah. you often look at things from, from your perspective, but yeah. there are many perspectives. Um, people look at things at different, in different ways and therefore solve problems differently. It, to be honest, Mike, between us and, and the way we look at our, our business and the World Partnership, especially Mandy and I, I mean, a combined... 70 years of experience in the, uh, the prime London markets. One of the most fantastic things about our role is um, being observers of people like yourself and work like that. But very much um, uh, the, the, sort of the diversity of the architecture in London is a phenomenal thing. And we see everything behind closed doors that you, the, the average public wouldn't see. Um, and that's the most fantastic piece uh, of our roles in some respects that you get up every day something's different and you're dealing with someone else that's really different so you know in, in your work I can, I've seen it changed and, and, and you've got a great team and you can see the difference of how you've moved with that but you know if you were to put all that together what would be your guiding principle of, for yourself or business oh shit um, uh, do you I, have one? I, I, I'm not sure that we have. I, I suppose you, you know, you've got to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. And, and I think the challenges uh, and, and the joy of uh, the challenges and the joys are, are yeah. interconnected. You yeah. know, your work and our work. We have the same clients. Um, we're working in the same field. I think it's that just that fascinating diversity that London brings. Yeah. That it brings in people from from across the world. Yeah. You know, we work with Chinese. We work with. Indians, we work with uh, Americans and all the European countries, the African countries. Mm. You know, I love people um, mm. and I love understanding people. Yeah, I agree. Um, and that's, you know, you never quite know who you're going to meet yeah. um, uh, when you get up in the morning and what you're going to work on. That's what makes it exciting. Yeah. So our skills, I think, are very, very similar. You have to yeah. learn to, to uh, and understand how other people. You know, yeah. Look at things. Each each new client is completely in, individual, different person altogether. So that's funny enough. It, it brings it back to if I've asked you that question about your guiding principle. One of the things that I think I take the most is that I really want to listen to everything one of my clients or one of the clients, not necessarily, or a new client arriving. It's just listening to what they want. Well, someone t- said to me the other day, "You've got two ears and one mouth, so you should be listening to twi- twice yeah. as much as your Very good point. your speaking." I think that's probably uh, that's something worth remembering. Yeah, definitely. So, getting to where we are now, very successful, um, moving into the different fields. What's next for Studio Indigo? Ah, what are the challenges that? Oh, get surviving Brexit, probably I should say. Mm. But uh, thankfully, touch wood. 
Um, You'd be pleased uh, to know the high end of the market is beginning to move quite well. Is it? I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good thing at the moment because we're slightly no. overwhelmed with work. Yeah, uh, so yes, no, you're right. We're um, we are beginning to um, um, notice the difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the workload is is, is increasing. Mm -hmm. uh, the work that we're doing now is diversifying f further. We're working on the new Mandarin Hotel. Yeah. We're doing some boutique shops and uh, and restaurants. Uh, that's uh, that's interesting. Diversifying your sort of trade and yeah, stuff. and uh, the the. the the boat work is 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 going incredibly well. We're, yeah, that's you know, it's glamorous, you know. I look forward yeah. forward to a nice trip on the boat. Actually, <laughs> on the boat so you know, um, in our last conversation, when we were having lunch together um, in a restaurant I'd never been to, by the way, which was fantastic. So thank you for that. But um, the um, we, we talked about New York, maybe the states, and further on, you're already. Engaged um, slightly with them, would you would you say that's the next big project, or maybe even LA? Uh, we'd love to work in LA. Um, well, the World we'll Chef can help you there. Fantastic. We just have to find the clients then, don't we? Yeah. Um, we're working in New York already, and that's exciting and, and different and challenging. Yeah. Um, and uh, certainly, it's we've worked with plenty of Americans in the UK yeah. um, and on on boats, but we've never really developed our work in America, which I think could be an interesting challenge. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, to be honest, what we have here uh, and uh, and abroad at the moment is, is keeping us pretty busy. We're working yeah. in, in Russia, we're working in India, we're working in Europe. So yeah. um, uh, it would be nice, perhaps in the years to come, that we might conquer America. Venture. Yeah, exactly. Well, Mike, listen, thank you very much for your time. It's been a real pleasure. It's great to sit in this lovely home that um, you know we've uh, both been involved in, but obviously sitting here with you has been fantastic. Thank well, you very much. Thank you once again, because you were the man who found the house, yeah. um, uh, had the inside track on it, and uh, mm. I think the deal was done and dusted very, very quickly, wasn't it? Was. it? We, we moved incredibly quickly, no messing around. Yeah. Um, and uh, so What an amazing project. Testament to uh, your skills. So, thank you, Brighton, thank you for your time. Appreciate it.